guys, it's Julian, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make deep and atmospheric techno in the style of Nothing and Luigi Tozzi. That style that is almost like dub techno, but it's a bit more deep and atmospheric. And yeah, as usual, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets. Everything from this video that you just heard in the intro is available right at the top of the description on my Bandcamp for just $5. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there, because it's already available. And yeah... Let's dive in. So we're in here, we're at 127 BPM, it's a little bit faster, you know, because typically if you're making like deeper techno, you're gonna wanna be, like you usually would think maybe like 123, 125, 120 even, but with this style, it's a little bit faster like main room techno, but then it's still like super deep and atmospheric, so it's kind of a different like juxtaposition there because it's still got that fast repetitive sort of feel like you know actual techno but it's just a bit deeper and the first sound that we have here is the kick which sounds like this so this is a rumble kick and it's a pretty straightforward rumble kick the first thing here is the sample so you can see this is the kick sample and you'll notice it's just a very deep And a bit smoother kick sample than you would use for a lot of other styles of techno, but it works really well here. And so the way this kick is being made is then it's going through this rumble rack where you can see we have a dry chain. And then we have the chain, which is just the reverb. So the first thing here is the reverb. Then it's going into this amp here, which you can see I actually have the output on dual. You can do either mono or dual here. I think it's a little bit more open with this style, you know, if you want to just have it be, like, super wide, you can, but I'll actually flip it back to mono for now to make it a little bit easier for you to hear. But yeah, so we just have that, which, if I turn off this filter here, that's what it sounds like coming out of the amp, so it's just taking it and distorting it, but it's also just bringing out that low end a ton and making it into the rumble that you hear and then finally we have a low pass filter and then that's the last thing on there which just gives it that extra bit of cutting out the high end so that we have just the low end and just that rumble and then finally i just have a compressor which side chains it to the punch of the kick and then we have an eq in here which cuts out a bit of room at 100 hertz you know making some room for the kick as well because that's typically where the punch is hitting and then it's got a little bit of a low end boost and yeah and then after that rack all we have is just a bit of saturation so just a little something to tie it all together and then you'll also notice this is going through the send here so i'm going to talk about that at the end but yeah that's the last little thing it's just we have a send that all the percussion and actually pretty much like a lot of the elements are going through and we even have the kick going through there. So it's going to be important once I explain that. You'll see. Then we have the hi-hats. So as you can hear, there's quite a few layers going here. I also have some percussion inside of this group. So the first thing would be this noise shaker. So if I play that with the main shaker. You can hear what this one's doing, it's just adding some of those extra little percussive notes in there. This one is made using operators, so what it is, is it's white noise, and then it's just going into a high pass filter. And then the white noise, the envelope is shaped to be very much like what you would imagine a shaker to be like. And you can also see that we have uh, actually some automation on there, I guess there isn't any automation on the decay. But yeah, so it's really great to use this in this style. Like, a lot of the percussions can be synthesized. It's a really great way to create these cool, you know, very interesting, very techno percussions as well because it sounds kind of synthetic and digital in a very techno way. And yeah, I definitely recommend, you know, playing around with white noise and envelopes and filtering to create some sounds from the style. Then we have this noise hi-hat. So this is the main one that you hear just the whole way through. This one is just some white noise as well going into a bandpass filter this time. So the bandpass is really good when you're trying to make a hi-hat. Because you can hear, you can get pretty much like any type of sound you want. Like it really gives you a lot of customization. And if you turn up the resonance, 
You can even get those more metallic, like, 808 hi-hat style sounds. And yeah, then we have the shaker. You can hear, you know, it's just a pretty standard shaker sound. The main thing is just how loud this is in the mix. You know, you hear it really coming through there. Like, it's not always just, you know, putting a bunch of processing on and making this a super fat sound. A lot of times, it's just how big the sound is relative to all the other sounds of the day. Then we have some filtered percussion, the first bit of it that we have in this track. And this is what that sounds like. You can hear this is just, you know, playing the same thing at the end of every bar or so. You know, just like that super repetitive, it's doing one thing, it's three different sounds here. Yeah, you can hear, it's just those three, they're being filtered a bit, and then they're being saturated. But they're all kind of like working toward the same goal here. And then that's also, you can see, like with a lot of this stuff, going through a bit of that sound. Then the last thing we have down here is this bell. And so this is just this bell sound. I've got it going through a bandpass filter because it makes it a bit deeper. Like you hear it in the whole mix. If I turn this bandpass off, you hear how right now you just get a little like. If I turn this bandpass. You know, it's a bit more in your face. So the bandpass just kind of like. Blends it into the mix. This is also going through a bit of saturation. Now, the thing that makes this one interesting is that it's going. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So, if you notice, it's basically this is the pattern. It's these three counts, and then this is where the pattern resets. So, you're going doo -doo 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 like that. This is what we would call a polyrhythm, where basically we have multiple rhythms, or really, I'm pretty sure it would be like time signatures even happening at once, because everything else here is like. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But then all of a sudden you add in this da -da 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 -da, which is like da -da 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 -da, like it's kind of restarting irregularly in a very repetitive and hypnotic way. And this is what we call a polyrhythm. And this is a really great way to add, like I said, something a bit more hypnotic and just kind of like more interesting really to your track it's gonna add a lot of depth by having all these different rhythms happening at once and this is very very popular in techno especially in this style now on the group of hi-hats i just have a bit of saturation and some high pass filters so here's without these you can hear that saturator is just fattening these up a lot kind of tying them all together and then the high pass is just to get rid of any low and make sure it's not going to get in the way of the bass and the kick. And yeah, then we have this pad. So you can hear this is that nice deep ambient pack like you would hear in the background or really in the foreground I should say of a track like this. So this is, this is the chord that you're hearing. What it's playing here is it's playing an A minor chord and then it's technically an A minor 9 but it's not really voiced the way you would typically voice an A minor 9 chord. So what's happening is you can see we have an A minor because we have A, the root note, C, the minor 3rd, and then E, the 5th. But then what I'm doing here is I'm adding, so I'm just adding another A up top, just an octave up from the root note. And then I'm also adding in this ninth here. Which you can hear plays nicely with the minor third. So the ninth is actually just one note down from the minor third. And then typically the way you would do this if you were doing an A minor 9 chord, is you would have it up there, an octave up. And then you'd also have this G here. And you would have then your minor 7th. But by putting this here, I like it because you get that kind of like dissonance between the C and the B. And it kind of creates that like deeper, a little bit jazzier sort of thing with the pad there. So I definitely recommend playing around with that. Like the key to these pads, 
they're all usually just based on minor chords. Like, if you really listen to these tracks, you know, it's all kind of that same thing. But then you're just adding in different things. Like, maybe you could even add in this fourth here. And then there you go. You get a whole other different type of vibe. That reminds me very much of, like, a nothing track. And then from the sound, the way this is made is using FM synthesis. So this is a really great way to make the pads in this style because it's all about creating interesting sounds like that have cool textures. You can't just have like a saw wave that's, you know, a really obvious saw wave with just like a low pass filter on it. You have to do things to kind of create more creative textures because obviously musically it's pretty simple. The texture is really what creates, you know, the interesting stuff in the track here. And so what we're doing is with FM synthesis is that you're adding you're sort of putting different waveforms together and adding them together to create your own new waveform and yeah it can be really useful to create these more interesting textured pads so what I have here is you can see I just have three sine waves but that's what the waveform those are creating together is which you can see I also have the second one detuned a little bit and then I have the chorus pitches turned up. This is basically what's going to allow you to create different textures. You can see as I turn these up and down, it changes the timbre of the sound. And yeah, so you just kind of play with these different things. You can even switch it to like, you know, a triangle wave or a square if you're feeling bold. But this is how you can create interesting textures for your pads for the style. And then what's happening is I have those all going into a bandpass filter. So that makes it a bit deeper. And you know, kind of filters it. I also have an LFO here, which is on the volume of oscillator C. So that's when you can hear it's kind of morphing. And then we also have it on the bandpass. You know, you always, the thing with these kinds of sounds is it's the texture, and then it's how the texture and the sound is changing and evolving over time. You can't, you don't really just want to have, like, that with no movement. That's kind of boring. It's a good sound, but it's kind of boring in the actual track. It's all about how it, the sound fits into the context of a track. So that LFO is perfect. And then we just have a bit of chorus on there. You can see I have a bit of reverb as well, giving it even more space. And then we just have some drum bus. Even though this is like a more like airy sort of pad sound that's in the high end, you still want to give it some kind of like, you know, fatness. And it also helps to give it some texture and warmth. And then finally, I just have this auto pan to kind of create that pulsing effect as if it's being sidechained to the kick, but you don't really want to sidechain to a rumble kick, so we've just done it that way. Then I have this little chord here. So all this is actually, as you can see, is just playing these different notes here. What it is, is it's a percussion sound. You can hear it's just playing like higher and lower notes with that inside of a simpler. But then what I've done is I've set up this resonator here playing an A minor chord. So again, that is the same key and the same chord actually as that pad. And then what happens is when you put the percussion into the resonator. We can create all these cool, exciting different chord sounds just by playing... different notes with the percussion which obviously without the resonator you know those just sound like higher and lower notes so yeah this is a really great way to create this type of sound this is another thing is like you don't want to just like i said you know get like a saw wave into a low pass filter to create these kind of chords it's gonna just sound really obvious and basic so this is a really great way to create something with a different texture that's a bit more unique you can put any sound into this like let's say i just go in here and grab like a bell sound there you go, you get a whole different vibe. Or even like this percussion. You know, it's you can create infinite different textures and exciting sounds this way. So I definitely recommend trying this to create your chords. Then we just have that going through a bit of echo, so you know, that super dubby kind of sound. And then a bit of drum bus, and that's it. And that's all you really need to create this really cool sound. Then we have a bit of filter percussion, so this is just some stuff. These different sounds, I have those just, you know, going through a filter. 
and a bit of echo as well and some reverb then we just have an amp which you can hear that's what really creates like the texture again it's all about creating interesting textured sounds we have some drum bus and then finally just a high pass filter you know really simple way to cr just create some extra little background sounds then we have this vinyl noise got that going through some saturation high pass and high end boost and then finally just the synth atmosphere which this is actually so this is just creating a little bit of atmosphere in the background again just adding something a bit more creative than just like you know your standard vinyl noise sound i just have this it's just a bit of white noise going through a bandpass filter with an lfo to create that movement and then the chorus has this feedback all the way up so that's creating that sort of like digital thing and then a bit of saturation and yeah that's just creating a bit of sort of background atmosphere between that percussion and the vinyl noise and the synth atmosphere and yeah so that is me for this one guys i hope you enjoyed as always make sure to like this video as well as subscribe and let me know what you think of this video in the comments i guess in the beginning you can get the full project files samples midi presets everything from this video is available right at the top of the description and if you're a patron on my patreon check there because it's already available and yeah thank you so much guys and i will see you tomorrow with another video